Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and this week on Azure Friday, I'm learning all about the Metadata Security Protocol, MSP, which is part of the Azure Instance Metadata Service, IMDS. It's TLAs, three-letter acronyms, this week on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Mini Lahoti, and we're going to learn all about MSP. So these are a lot of three-letter acronyms, Mini, but you're going to explain it all to me because this is an important security feature in virtual machines and virtual machine scale sets. Yes, that's correct. Hi, Scott. It's nice to meet you. Uh, as you mentioned, I am the PM for the Azure Instance Metadata Service. And anytime you want to access a virtual machine's metadata, you would ping the IMDS IP address. Now, these critical endpoints have been part of targets of several security attacks and that have cost Microsoft millions and millions of dollars in mitigation efforts and loss of customer trust. So the Metadata Security Protocol, or MSP, came about so that we could um, mitigate some of these security risks by ensuring that only authenticated applications can communicate with these Azure host endpoints. Okay, so I remember doing an episode of Azure Friday. I'm going to have to dig it up. I want to say... 10, maybe even 15 years ago, it's a, it's an IP address that's like a well-known one. Like we have like localhost, which is a well-known you know domain that points to 127.0.0.1. But this is an IP address that's specific to Azure, right? That's correct. So the 169.254.169.254 IP address is the specific one for IMDS. Yes. Okay, interesting. And was it for the early days of Azure just kind of open to the world and by the world, I mean the subnet within your virtual machine, but not from the right. outside. Right. So as long as you're inside the virtual machine, anyone can access the IMDS endpoint. And that has been a bit part of the security threat that we're trying to mitigate. So with the MSP feature, you can now decide which processes can communicate with the IMDS endpoint. Because right now, IMDS can be accessed by anyone that's on the virtual machine. Interesting. Okay. And is this going to be a thing that is block all and allow or allow all and, and block? Like what's the and right way to look at that? On you. you decide which, uh, which processes you want to communicate. Because right now, if you do enable the MSP feature, it is going to continue allowing uh, access to all the processes, but it will allow you to log the different applications that are communicating with these endpoints. And then you can choose which ones you want to either access or deny uh, to those endpoints. Oh, very cool. So this means that it will conform. There's enough flexibility in this feature that it's going to conform to whatever uh, security posture I choose to have. I could do a block all and see what breaks, or I could do an allow all and just block things. That's correct. Yes. All right, cool. Let's learn. Let's see it. Awesome. So in my demo, I want to show you how you can first register to access this feature since we are in public preview. So on Microsoft Portal, you will go to your preview features, and you're going to type in metadata. So you'll be able to see the metadata security protocol. Now, in my case, I'm already registered. So all you have to do is click and hit register. Once you're registered, you can go to your portal. And as you're creating a virtual machine or a virtual machine skill set, you will go through a normal process of configuring everything. And under management, you will see the metadata security protocol. Now, you can check the box for both wire server and IMDS. Now, there are three different modes that you can use to um, enable this feature the audit, enforce, and disable mode. Now, the audit mode is the easiest way to track which processes are communicating with the endpoints. This allows you to figure out, are there any threat actors? Are there any communications that you don't want IMDS to have? Um, but if you do want, you're, you're good to go, you know what processes are communicating, and you want to go ahead and enforce the, the security feature where the guest side and the host side do a key latch and make sure that all the communication that's flowing is only for authenticated application you will select and forth. And of course, if you decide you don't want to use this feature anymore, you can go ahead and disable it as well. So once you have enabled this feature and you have provisioned your VM, you can go inside your VM. And what we're going to do now is check whether we can communicate with the IMDS IP address. So to communicate with the IP address for IMDS, we have the 169.254 metadata instance, and I'm going to communicate with the 2021.0201 version. I'm going to hit Enter. Now you can see that I was able to communicate with this IP address. Now, if you want to check what are some other applications that are communicating with all these different endpoints, you can go to your File Explorer. In your C drive, you're going to click on Windows Azure, Proxy Agent, and Logs and you can open your proxy agent.connection file. 
So here you can see that I communicated with the IP address for IMDS. It was my virtual machine that was communicating with admin privilege access. And the application that was communicating was the PowerShell 7. Now, wow. you can see there's so many different other processes that are communicating with IMDS, but this is not the most efficient way of looking at the, the different logs, right? So we created a tool called an allow list tool that will help you parse through this data file and see separately what are the endpoints that are being accessed and what applications are accessing these endpoints. So let me show you that tool. So what you'll do first is click on Upload Logs, and you will select the proxy agent.connection file. Okay, and this is like a little Python app. This is a little Python app that we develop. Um, until we get to Portal, we have our own little exe file that we're using to make sure that we have a better user experience. Sure. Well, this is super helpful, though, because if you've got a text file with 25,000 logs, I mean, you, you, you're going to need a tool to make it cleaner. So any tool in a storm. Exactly, exactly. So this tool also tells you, so when it says 28 privileges, it means that there are 28 different endpoints that are being accessed by 11 different applications. So here you can see the privileges or the endpoints that are being accessed. And here are the different applications that are communicating with these endpoints. Now you can either manually edit these privileges uh, and the paths, but I like to create a role first. So let's say I'm, that I should only be able to access the metadata instance 2020 or the 2021 IP address. But you can, of course, select as many as you like or as few as you like. You need at least one. You're going to create add role. And it confirms which privileges or endpoints you are able to communicate with. Then you're going to select the different applications that can communicate with the endpoints that you selected in the previous step. So I was using PowerShell earlier. I can also use the Windows app. And then I can hit Add Assignment. Now, what this right. does. So you're doing that. So just to make sure I understand, you just gave, you named a role, and you gave access to that PowerShell. So people might be thinking, why would I want to do that? Like, uh, I saw a company that had a really cool app that would run on their virtual machines that would go talk to the Azure Instance Metadata Service, get the compute details, get the storage information, and they would make a wallpaper and then change the wallpaper of their virtual machine. If you blocked all access to the Instance Metadata Service, then that custom app would stop working. Here is the right way to go and make a proper role and do it correctly with the with yes, MTS. That is right. Because what if there what if as I was going through this process, I saw something like, for example, let's pretend that non-agent managers should actually not be communicating with IMD. Right. But this allows me to see exactly what's happening within my virtual machine. Very and cool. then I can block access to it using this allow list tool. Okay. So now that I have generated my allow list, you can confirm and check what. So you can see I selected the 202006. I selected the 2021-02 I API versions. And in terms of identities, I selected the W app agent and the PowerShell app that will now be able to communicate. And this is under my role, so my name, Mini Under Access. So you can create as many roles and as many role assignments as you want. So it doesn't just have to be for, you know, just per VM. It can be per user, per process as well. And then what you can do is you can download this file. So I already have it saved. And then you can modify your ARM template and you can upload it into Portal, however you edit your template, and be able to um, use the MSP feature. Right, OK. So then ARM templates are big and complicated and express all of the things that you care about, whether it be in your entire app, your entire enterprise, or your virtual machine. And then this allow list generator is kind of making an, the, the little island, the hard part that is tedious and probably a little bit uh, uh, error prone. I would not want to write this by myself. Right. So we also support SIG Artifact in the shared gallery, in the private gallery on Portal. So once we go GA, uh, or once we are generally available, you will be able to do this automatically in the Portal experience itself. Very cool. OK. So then you apply that with your ARM template, and then uh, they would take a moment to propagate. And then I would see if, if you chose to either block or allow that process, it would, uh, it would work. That's correct. Rock on. OK. Where would I get this Python tool? So all the details of how to configure the metadata security protocol are on the Microsoft Learn page. And when you, when you click on MSP configuration, 
it will walk you through how to enable the flag and also how to create uh, an Wait, what was your question again? Where would I get the Python tool? The Is Python it? tool. Oh, right. So that would be under create rules from audit logs. And you would there's a link to the latest release page and you'd click on oh, that. Oh, so it's on GitHub. That's yeah. great. Yes. So where can I leave feedback about the tool or about IMDS? Right. So for the allow list tool or anything related to IMDS or metadata security protocol, you can go to the feedback.azure community and you can click on instant metadata service and then make sure you tag MSP so that it links to the correct correct team. And if you want to learn more about this, this area and you want to leave any other um, any other feedback, you can go down to the feedback page and provide product feedback as well. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I'm learning all about MSP and the Azure Instance Metadata Service and how these things fit together today on Azure Friday.